Welcome in to the Inside Carolina podcast. You are listening live to The Scoop, brought to you by Johnny T-Shirt and JohnnyT-Shirt.com, the number one stop for all your UNC apparel needs. Johnny T-Shirt and JohnnyT-Shirt.com. This is The Scoop, the number one UNC football recruiting podcast in the whole world. I'm joined, as always, by Don, a.k.a. Donnie Scoops. What's going on, man? Not too much. I actually will be coaching my first girls basketball team of the the season tonight. First game. First game. No, we, we no games. We will not have any games. It's just purely practices. It's a rec league. Uh, just purely practices. And I've been strictly prohibited from having any uh, scrimmages or any drills that uh, include contact. So this is going to be um, challenging to keep it fun and interesting. Um, for the girls, but I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. What's awesome. going on in Ross's world? Not much, man. Busy, 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 uh, basketball, football, crossover season. And it's cold outside. You know, I had a workout this morning in about 29 degree temps, no big deal. Um, and yeah, that's it. So first guys, Hey, we have a big show. We are bringing on Don Tavius Nash here shortly for an interview. Nash of course is, he was the first commitment in the 2021 class. Uh, a four-star safety out of Gastonia, North Carolina. So we're going to bring on Nash for an interview here in about 10, 15 minutes. Before that, we had huge news yesterday during the basketball game. Bryson Nesbitt, a 24-7 sports three-star tight end. I think 24-7 sports has him as a four-star. He committed to UNC. Kind of came out of nowhere, at least for me, because Don didn't tell me anything. Um, but, of course, the, the big, big target that we kind of been waiting for for his decision, he committed to the Tar Heels. We're going to get to that immediately. But first, I want to remind you to rate, review, and subscribe to the uh, Inside Carolina podcast. Just click on the podcast. Click five stars. That literally takes five seconds. I actually rated a podcast five stars this morning. Leave a short review. What podcast? The Ryan Rosilla podcast. Uh, I was thinking about I was thinking about our podcast, and I was like, hey, man, I'm going to go and review or uh, rate this podcast. It's yeah, how can you expect others to rate our podcast if you don't? rate yeah. podcast yourself i need i need to do it more so rate review subscribe i mean leave a little review nice review it can be anything you can tell us something you like about our podcast one of the other podcasts or just anything rate review subscribe that helps us a lot and then our new top five we're going to do a top five at the end of this show that's gonna be top five animals the new top five that you can email don or message don on twitter or on inside carolina is the top five so so with um the 2021 class signing the next time we record that week we're going to do the top five 2021 commit commitments signees that you're most excited for. That's UNC commitments and signees that you're most excited for. Don, anything to add on that? Yeah, um, because by the time we end up doing the next one, it would be the week of signing day, which is strange to think about. And I, I actually received a bunch of questions the last couple of weeks about this this upcoming or this current top five, just how to submit it. You can uh, PM I guess it's PM me on inside Carolina's message board. Don Callahan is, is my name on there. Or you can tweet at me at Don Callahan, I C, or if you prefer email Don at inside Carolina.com. And you can also send it to Ross. That yeah. would be great. Just send it to Don the, Don I, the, I have to do enough around this show. <laughs> we, um, your, I hair get looking, in, your hair is looking extra vertical today. Check you us like out on it? YouTube if you want to see Don's hair. Well, I think it's just the way the camera. I always have a hard time setting up the camera properly. Yeah. What's going on with your like? Do you have a tie on? No, it's just. Oh, okay. That was, yeah, it did look yeah. a little. It looked like you had like a. Should I wear a tie next time? Sure. Anything you want to do. When you wear a tie for UNC games, when it's hot as shit outside, it cracks me up. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta look nice. Yeah. You know, yeah, I gotta I mean... bring up this the spiffy meter in that press box which is yeah. difficult to do i can't do I mean, it by myself nothing says style like you and a, a tie and cargo shorts <laughs> okay what were you gonna I say don't think, no i never wore a tie and cargo <laughs> shorts just want to make that clear uh i had a friend shout out jeff joyce who said he loves when i make these little comments towards you he said he cracks up every time well jeff i have something to say to you but i'll get in <laughs> trouble to say if i say it all right but, what are you gonna say anything else no, the only thing was that I don't know if you've looked at the top five, and I won't give it give it away. But some of the some of the submissions were kind of interesting, 
which is okay. I'm, I'm sure what you wanted when you came up with this top five. So it should be good later on in, th- in this podcast. Great. That's a teaser. Okay. We're going to get right into it. We're going to have Nash on here shortly. So let's get right into Bryson Nesbitt. Uh, let me give you some bio information on him. He is a six foot six, 235 pound tight end. So physically, I mean, he's already obviously very tall, probably could add, certainly add a lot more weight. He's ranked number 392 in the nation. He's number 16th ranked tight end, and he's number 22 player in the state of North Carolina. So he is a high three-star, and 24-7 sports has him even higher. A four-star, number 10 tight end in the nation. He picked UNC over – Don, why don't you just tell us. Uh, tell us about his recruitment and who he picked UNC over, and we'll get into it from there. Yeah, so his final top five was uh, UNC, UCLA, South Carolina, Old Miss, and Virginia Tech. This basically came down to UNC and UCLA – and South Carolina, although I think that was more of kind of like a courtesy sort of thing because both of his parents were athletes of South Carolina, so mm-hmm. he kind of kept them in there. Um, but I don't think, from what I gather from people close to him, I don't think he liked the vibe or the environment in South Carolina. Wasn't what you know, not to say anything bad about it, it just didn't fit him, and, and that happens. Um, so basically, you know, his recruitment came down to North Carolina and UCLA. Really liked the vibe at UCLA. He went to a basketball camp there about a year ago and loved it out in California. Um, and so one of the main check boxes he needed to check off before he made a decision was to return to UCLA, which obviously for those who've been following recruiting know that the dead period made that very difficult to do. But last week he was able to make that visit. He also had some pretty important conversations and got some, some crucial questions answered from UNC staff and uh, made the commitment. A lot of that stuff, as far as what those questions were, um, the, the the discussions he had with with offensive coordinator Phil Longo and tight end coach John Lilly, we break that all down in in the um, the Q and A that we posted today. So definitely check that out for more details on all that. Awesome, and this moves UNC's class up to number thirteen in the nation. Do you know where it was um, yesterday before we committed? If it wasn't thirteen, it might have been fourteen. So I don't know if it moved it up that much. Okay. I think it, okay. I'm not sure either. Um, but I mean, this is a big recruit. I mean, he is, he settles in right there after Dontavious Nash before KB uh, Passor and the rankings are kind of right in the middle of UNC's high ranked cl- class, a very high three star. And look, this is, this was their major target. This was the long term tight end target for UNC, and they got their man. And he's also a pass catching target, I mean, pass catching tight end. He's not going to be. You know, I think the last class, maybe they signed more blocking tight ends. Um, and, I mean, if you know how UNC uses their tight end, Gary Walson this year, he does block a lot. He's he's almost in on every play as either a blocking tight end, but he does go out for passes. I imagine the big sell for him after reading your article, Don, this morning, was that they're going to use Nesbitt a little bit differently and try to make him a little bit more of an active passer in the offense, uh, even as a wide receiver at times. Is that kind of the vibe you got? I mean, I know they make these promises – but what can you tell us about that? Yeah, I think, well, I don't want to go too much detail because it's giving away the story we posted this morning. But um, yeah, I think if you are a tight end and you're, especially if you compare it to UCLA, who um, I believe they had a tight end drafted pretty high last year, this past draft, um, and they're getting the ball to their tight end a bunch. Um, UNC's offense really isn't all that appealing. Uh, but I really think to be honest, I mean, he needed those questions answered. He did. But I, th- I really think, that for him, the two keys were the environment, you know, the, not just the football program, but also the, just the college environment of North Carolina it really appealed to him. This is a kid who, who definitely academics are very important to him. UNC obviously has a pretty good um, academic reputation. But then also, and this kind of chimes into what we're, you know, our guest has coming on, and that's purely a coincidence, and it's a very convenient <laughs> coincidence. Yeah. Um, one of his really good friends is Dontavious Nash. And, and we'll get into this with, with Dontavious, but they've known each other since first or second grade, have been travel basketball teammates um, since then. Um, Gabe Stevens, another one who's on that travel basketball team. So having two guys who you've been on the road with, I'm sure he's been roommates with at certain times for certain AAU tournaments, made a huge difference. Those guys were in his ear, and it's so much easier for a, for a friend to kind of be in your ear mm-hmm. than just – you know, and not to take anything away from what Keyshawn Silver does, but Keyshawn Silver, who didn't know, um, 
it, it, uh, it means a whole lot more when it's coming from a good friend as opposed to just a commitment at a school because obviously you know that commitment has, has an agenda, whereas your friend, you know who he is and, and, and that sort of thing. Yeah, uh, f- for sure there. And um, I was going to add, I mean, UCLA, I mean, let's get real. I mean, this guy is from Charlotte. It's not like he's going to be going or parents to be flying across the country for games. UNC makes a lot more sense to him. I get, I, in my mind, you know, South Carolina and some other of the ACC – SEC schools maybe more of the competition because he must have liked you he must have liked UCLA enough to go out there but when you kind of sit down and think about the logistics and geography it's tough to see a guy go that far it's happened before just uh unlikely uh physically as a player Don as you I think you're texting Nash right now it seems like yeah what, what Nash does, is having a little bit of a hard time getting in he, he's asking for the meeting ID but so I'm gonna send him this and see if that works okay yeah sorry I'm gonna I'm gonna mess that up We'll keep this in. Um, you good? I think so. Okay. I'll get, wait for his response. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, what does Ezit bring physically, and like, what kind of receiver is he, and, and, why, and tight end is he? So, the, the the most interesting thing about him, from an athletic standpoint, is that he's only played one season of organized football, and that was this past year. Even though his dad played college um, college football and also played in the in the NFL for the Saints, I believe. Um, you know, his parents really didn't want him to play football until he got a little bit older, more mature, physically mature. And uh, so he's only played that one year. So so really, he has a lot of um, uh, he doesn't have the bad habits that a lot of guys pick up at a younger age. You know, and and in addition to that, he was very hungry to learn the 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 um, the sport um, and learn the nuances. So you'll see a guy who um, who definitely. I don't want to say he's polished, but he um, he understands the game already pretty well. But at the same time, you know, he has that uh, that high ceiling because he he hasn't played a whole lot. And with with um, reps, um, he's going to get better. And a great example of that is this fall when I saw him um, in the seven on seven circuit, because obviously he wasn't able to play high school football. He won't be able to play high school football in the spring. He has made significant strides as a receiver. He's also added some really good weight, mm-hmm. um, but still has his his leaping ability and and the and the unbelievable ball skills. He's definitely he's not like this unbelievable you know receiver like uh, pass catcher, but he definitely has made some some spectacular catches that I've seen in different environments. Yeah, he was <laughs> Nash was trying to get in here, so we're gonna bring on Nash here shortly to close with that. You can kind of look at his frame. You can tell that he's not physically where he needs to be. He definitely needs to get into UNC's program. This is Bryson Nesbitt. Uh, add some weight, but he has the physical traits. We're gonna get into his recruitment with John Lilly after the Nash interview. We're gonna bring on Dontavius Nash, UNC's safety commitment future signee right now, um, and we'll be right back with Nash. Welcome back to Inside Carolina's The Scoop Podcast, UNC football's number one recruiting podcast. We have a very special guest. We have 2021 safety Dontavius Nash with us. What's going on, Dontavius? Um, not much. Good stuff. We're going to head to Don for the first question. Yeah, so uh, Dontavius, it's kind of convenient that we have you on today because one of your really good friends has actually committed to uh, North Carolina and is going to be a teammate of yours in the next few years. So what can you tell us just about your part in getting, um, getting a Nesbitt to commit to North Carolina? Uh, My part, it was just, I I played a big role since (laughs) I could talk to him a lot. And, uh, you know, I just, I just use my people skills, you know, being around him, we know each other. So I know the things that he like and stuff like that. So, I was just pointing out all the good things about Carolina and what we can do there together and like actually have a chance to play again together. So can you just, just give us a background just cause I think um, Bryson, he wasn't hundred percent sure, but he believes that you guys have known each other since the first or second grade. How far back do you guys go? And, and you know, you guys were teammates. I mean, just give us a little bit of background on you, on you too. Um, we've been knowing each other for, yeah, about since first or second grade. Uh, we, we first we started off playing basketball together and you know we had a really good basketball team growing up and then we stayed together through middle school and then once we got to high school the team had broke up but we all kept in you know contact 
And so when you're when you're recruiting him to UNC, like what's that what's that like? Are you calling him every day? Are you texting him? Or how do you kind of do that? Because you don't want to you know, be overbearing, but you want to show that you know UNC is a place to um, be. It's really just like joking around with him every time I see him. Like uh, I'll see him at a seven on seven or something. And I'll be like, you know, you come to Carolina, right? And mm-hmm. he'll just start smiling. And I'll be like, uh, it's it's just joking around with him and you know letting him feel comfortable. That's what I was doing, just joking around, not pressuring him to do anything because I was I was going to support him with whatever decision he made. So, Now, you have actually, because you're a safety and he's a tight end, um, I, and I don't think Huff and South Mech have ever played, but you've played against him, I'm, I'm sure, in seven-on-seven seven settings and maybe some practices and everything. What What's, I guess, your take on him as a player, but what does he bring to the table? Um. He brings a lot to the table. Uh, he, he's explosive. He can jump. He's very athletic. He's fast, strong in hands. So playing against him, it can always be tough just because of, like, his size and his strength and stuff like that. He, he's he's going to be a great player. Now, now to go to your recruitment, um, you know, you've been committed since last summer, the summer before this past summer. So, um, one, why, did, why commit so early? Um, it was just, like, a matter of feeling at home and like, I didn't feel like that anywhere else. And I was just like, all right, boom, I feel at home. And I'm going to just go ahead and commit. Like I called my people and I told them what I was going to do. And they was, they was behind me with this. So I just went ahead and committed. Yeah, and, and Don Tavis, you had a bunch, look, I'm looking at your offer list right now. I mean, you had a bunch of big offers. I mean, I see Michigan, Penn state, Ole Miss. I mean, and you commit an LSU. I mean, you committed so early, but what was your recruitment like before you committed to UNC? Were you getting, pretty highly recruited by all those schools or what was it like? Um, yeah, it was, I was pretty much still getting recruited by some of those schools. Uh, some of them might not have offered as early, but they eventually offered and uh, they, they've been recruiting me and it's just Carolina always stood out to me from the first time I took my visit there, they stood out. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at now, I mean, you had Virginia tech, uh, Tennessee, Louisville, Georgia, and of course, Florida with, with our guy, Tim Brewster. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> When you talk about UNC, I mean, you committed the at the um, that select event, the camp, Showtime camp, Showtime camp on campus uh, ahead of the 2019 season. This is before Mac Brown and staff even coached a game. What was that staff's kind of sell to you? What did they tell you about UNC, having not even seen them play yet? I'm talking about Coach Brown staff, right? Yeah, yeah. What they told you because you that's who you committed to that that summer. Um, you know, it was just – they told me that they wanted me there and I wanted to go somewhere where I was wanted. Uh, they wanted me there. They felt like I could help the program a lot. I could fit in. I could play well with their system. So that's really all they told me. And once I realized I can do that, it was just like, all right, yeah, this is the place I want to be. And when you yeah. talk, about the, talk about the system and your position, how do you think uh, Jay Bateman – because, I mean, Jay Bateman's your, will be your position coach at, at safety. How do they expect to kind of use you and what have they told you um, about the safety's role in the UNC defense? Um, I really don't know where they're going to play me at, but I can play, like, any defensive back position. Okay. So I feel like uh, they might just, you know, try to teach me every position just to throw me in spots whenever they need me. Yeah, and not, before we get off of your actual recruitment, um, the one thing I noticed was during your – I guess it would have been your junior junior year – you visited North Carolina a bunch for games and you could have went to a lot of different places. I mean, you were going, you were visiting almost as much as, or basically as much as a commit. So what, um, why did you make so many, this is before you committed. So why did you make so many visits to North Carolina that season? This was during the Fedora year or Fedora's last year. Um, it was just, you know, the love that was there. Even be- before coach Brown came, it was always love. The games were always great. You know, uh, just, just the feeling of being in Kenan Stadium, it was, it was just, it was crazy. So I, I just love the feeling. Now, um, with, uh, you know, right now, you, you decided to stick to your decision to enroll early. When you found out that the, 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 the North Carolina high school football season was going to be delayed until February, was it, was it pretty simple for you to just stick with your plan to enroll early? Or did you... Did you have some pause and, and think maybe I should stay to play one more season with my teammates? Because you guys um, had a good year last year. Yeah, it was – I've always known that I was going to enroll early since my freshman year, since I got my first offer. 
Uh, I knew I was going to roll early. So when the season got pushed back, it really just – it didn't stop anything. It was just like, wow, I won't be able to get to play my senior year. But it's like, all right, we have to get past that. Our next stop is Chapel Hill. Um, are you pretty pumped to get on campus? I mean, what's a, what were your emotions right now? We're in December. You'll, you're going to be there in about a month. Um, I'm ready. I'm ready to get to work. So, yeah, I'm just ready to be there and get to work. What have they, what have they told you? What's the staff told you so far – in terms of preparing, are you doing uh, strength and conditioning stuff already, or what's the prep looking like from now until January? Um, they haven't told me anything to do, but I've been doing my own thing. You know, uh, I trained with a trainer named Jamal Rowe. He played in the NFL, and now he's in the CFL. So I train with him. I do a lot of DB drills and stuff like that. And, uh, I lift a lot with him, too. Nice. Now, Don wrote oh, – we have a little some show notes. He wrote that maybe position – you mentioned how your position is maybe not set. Don, do you want to kind of – get into that part of, of him and Jay Bateman? Yeah, well, I think a lot of people have kind of assumed that you'll be a safety, but, I mean, I've heard that Bateman thinks that you can play corner would and also would be a good nickel. Um, have they talked about just – have they have they just plainly said, we're just going to move you around? What was kind of, I guess, their pitch to you when, when you're talking about those sort of things? Um, really, they, they really never talked to me about where I was going to play at. They okay. Just me, get there and be ready. Okay. What if they have you play kicker? I'm glad that would be the best kicker in the country. <laughs> okay. That's funny. You know, Don Tavis, when you committed, we started calling Don. We called him Don Tavis Callahan. <laughs> it was like a little running joke we had. Um, well, let me let me ask you about the. Um, uh, <laughs> Don completely the, ignores my joke. The commitment uh, uh, chat that you guys have, uh, mm. because uh, we had Keyshawn on here. Uh, two weeks ago, and he still claims that he was the, I guess, the, the creator of it. But you've been committed way longer than him. Um, so so tell us just how that, that whole commitment chat kind of came about. All right, so the chat actually started <laughs> with me, Caleb Hood, and Power Eccles. Mm -hmm. We right. were all in the chat, and then we were talking about, okay, who we wanted to get and who we wanted to play with, who were the coaches targeting and stuff like that. And once we started getting more commits, they took – the um the chat from our message to Snapchat. So I give that to Keyshawn. He used the Snapchat. Ah, the okay. Okay. So, so are you... there are there two versions still? Is there a, is there a cell phone text version and a Snapchat version? Man, there's so many so many group chats. Okay. We have. What's the main one? What's the main one? Is it text or is it Snapchat or is it uh, IG it's or what? One. It's the Snapchat one. It's really? Voice. Uh, Don, you big Snapchatter? Uh, I am not. I'm not. I guess none of my friends are Snapchatters, so, you know. But um, um, what so about you, I, I, Ross? Yeah, I'm on Snapchat, of course. Uh, I'm hip. So, Dontavious, that, that kind of group of um, – I mean, what was your kind of role in getting a lot of these Charlotte guys to commit? Is, is that Was that kind of a focus? Because there's a lot of guys, you and Power, um, uh, I mean, Drake obviously May. Drake May, some other guys. I mean, is that something that was important to you to kind of get all these Charlotte guys now Nesbitt together? Uh, well, Coach Brown, he told us he want all the in-state players, all the best players in the state to stay in-state to play. So, you know, most of us are from the Charlotte area, and then you have Caleb Hood, who's who's out in uh, the Rockingham area and stuff like that. But that, that was the goal, getting the best players to stay in North Carolina. And I felt like the ones that were in Charlotte were some of the best ones. What do you think about this class as a whole? And, and, and kind of to build on that, the momentum it's created for kind of UNC football. Um, the class, I think we have the best class in the country, and I feel like we, we can come in and, and actually help the team do something big soon. So, you know, we, we have a lot of guys who, who's ready to get in and ready to do whatever to win. So I just feel like when we get there, it, it'll be it'll be nothing but, but history. There you go. Well, a lot of those guys are actually teammates of yours on the Carolina Stars, Drake May, uh, Gavo, Gavin Blackwell. Um, what's it – I mean – did, have you you've been playing with those guys for a while? So was your mentality, hey, I want to continue to play with those guys in, in actual football games? Um, actually, I started my first season with the with the Stars was last year. Okay, okay. So Gavin, Gavin had reached out to me. It was like, uh, come out, try for seven on seven or whatever. So I went out there, I tried out, and then once I really like seen that I like to play with those guys and I like to be around those guys, that's when I really stuck into it. Now we asked you about uh, Bryson. As a player, you obviously in in uh, Carolina Stars practice go up against Gavin, 
and Drake. Drake, I'm sure, I'd love to get your take on Drake, but I also, Gavin, because he doesn't stop talking on the field. What's what's that like going to get those two guys? Because they're very different. Um, With Gavin, it's like, whew. Whatever he says, he can back it up. So if, if you're going to talk junk to Gavin, you better be able to back it up because if you can't, he's going to embarrass you. So it's just uh, Gavin, he's a real competitive dude. He he talks he talks his junk. Uh, he he's a real great guy, and he can back up what he says. What about Drake? Uh, Drake, uh, he's a real like I wouldn't say he's quiet, but he's he's he he's a vocal leader. Uh, Drake's like the funny guy. He's always cracking jokes, and then uh, you know on the field, you have to be a great DB to cover some of Drake's passes. Uh, Drake Drake puts the ball on on the on the dot every time. Is it is it hard because you know I mean I feel like his his greatest asset is his ability to kind of dissect a defense um is, is it hard going up against a guy like that who's just you almost don't know what he's thinking and you're afraid he might be looking over here and you're looking over there just kind of the mental side of it is, is it difficult going up against drake yeah it, it is because like, like like you said you never know what drake's gonna do drake he can see the whole field and, and the way he can read the coverage is like he knows where he's going he knows where he's going before the play starts because he, he can he, he can he can find the mismatches and stuff like that so it's just, it's just not knowing what he's going to do. It, it puts you, like, in the shop. There you go. All right, Dontavious, we have one, I have one last question for you before we can get out of here. We really appreciate your time. This has been great. Can you tell our listeners and UNC fans maybe one thing about you that they don't know, non-football, maybe a hobby or something you're into, a unique fact about you that, that we don't um, know yet? I'm listed as one of the best basketball players in the state. Okay. Okay. Um, Basketball was was my first love. I took that serious, and then once uh, I started getting college attention, the football left basketball alone. But I'm one of the best <laughs> basketball players in the state, probably the best defender in the state for basketball. Um, Did you play as a junior? Yeah, I played as a junior. We lost in the uh, semifinals right before the state championship. So, so are, you I, like, are you like a shooting guard kind of wing player? I play whatever they need me to play. Uh, <laughs> sometimes like I play five to four. It's just whatever. Just I can guard like anybody. Just like in football. The, the mentality that you're kind of showing right here is, is what I've seen on the football field from you. I mean, you definitely have a – I feel like every time i dealt with you, you've been the nicest kid. Um, but on the field, I've seen you – you play a little angry. Is that kind oh, of your yeah. mentality? And you, you definitely have a chip on your shoulder, and you definitely – you want to hurt some people. <laughs> uh, it's just like – it's ooh, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's like a switch that I have. Like, okay, during the week I can be nice, but, like, once it's game time, it's game time. And if you're on the opposite side of me, just be ready for what that comes with because, like, I don't know you. We're not friends. We're not family. Mm. None of that. My grandma can line up against me, and <laughs> he's going to get the word. You're, oh, you're a dog. That's right. You're a dog on the field. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, man. <laughs> I think fans will love that part about you, uh, that aggressive mentality, that competitive nature. Dontavious, we really appreciate your time. Um, and, yeah, good luck to you uh, enrolling at UNC in January and, and your career at Carolina. Yeah, thanks, hey, Dontavious. Thank you. thank you. All right, guys. We'll see you. Welcome back to the Inside Carolina podcast. That was a great interview with Dontavious Nash. Uh, before we get into more about Bryson Nesbitt in our top five and recap that interview, I want to talk about Johnny T-Shirt and GiantT-Shirt.com, our loyal podcast sponsors. This is a great time to, to shop, to, to show your love for Giant T-Shirt. Make sure you go to their store on Franklin Street or head to GiantT-Shirt.com and, and you know, shop for anything you need for Carolina. Stocking stuffers, gifts, get all your Christmas shopping done in a one-stop shop. I do that. I get a gift for my niece, a gift for my nephew, I guess my other baby niece who I <laughs> barely met. Um, and then get something for, you know, I don't, my parents aren't huge Carolina fans, but my brother and sister-in-law both went to Carolina, get them a sweatshirt, get them something UNC and I'm done with my Christmas shopping and all you can do that. It's easy. And that's the easy way to do it. Get all sent to you, wrap it up. You're done. And you can head to inside Carolina and our premium premium VIP subscribers get 10% off from every Johnny t-shirt purchases. Check out their website. They have tons of stuff. It's not just t-shirts. It's not just clothes. It's everything you could ever want and need as a UNC fan. Johnny T-Shirt and JohnnyT-Shirt.com. All right, Don, I think that was my best uh, ad read yet. Let's get right back into it. Uh, what did you think about the Nash interview? Well, I liked your ad read better than the Nash interview. But uh, Nash, yeah, I think he's kind of a 
the forgotten guy in this class just because he committed so long ago. Yeah. Which is kind of unfair because if you think about it, he's been the most, I guess, faithful to North Carolina, believed in, in the program, you know, way, well before any of these other guys, not to take anything away from him. Uh, but, you know, he's a four star guy. And, and like I mentioned in the latter part of that interview, I mean, he, he definitely has this, mm-hmm. this sneaky meanness to him that I've seen. Um, and it's not like all the time. Uh, it's just these subtle um, moments. You see it where it, it's a little scary. You know, you worry about the, about the <laughs> other guys on the oppo- opposing team sometimes. What were your thoughts on, on yeah. Dontavious? I mean, yeah, seems like a sharp kid and that loves comp- competition, loves. I mean, you say you play any position they need him to play. Uh, same with basketball. You know, and he has size. You can tell he's a big dude, 6'2". He's probably a little heavier than 170 now, I'd imagine. Mm-hmm. You would yeah. just think he's – I mean, that was probably his, his his weight back when he was a junior. He's probably closer to 180, 190 now. Um, so he's going to be a big-time safety uh, or, or nickelback for UNC. Um, and if Jay Bateman thinks he can play corner as well, he'll be a versatile defensive back who clearly loves Carolina. Uh, he didn't hesitate ever on his commitment. Uh, in-state guy. So he checks all the boxes for what I think fans and, and, and UNC – would love in uh, in their signees. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and of course, played a big role with with Bryce and Nesbitt. All right, you want to get into Nesbitt more? Is there anything else? Yeah, on, yeah. Uh, let's let's segue right into Nes- Nesbitt. Um, what uh, what remaining questions do you have, Ross? <laughs> well, I, reading your interview, which VIP subscribers can read, you mentioned um, or he mentioned how important John Lilly was in his recruitment. Of course, this is mm-hmm. Bryce and Nesbitt. We're kind of switching back and forth between these two kids in this podcast, uh, tied in from South Mech in Charlotte. Uh, tell us about how John Lilly recruited him because he's the newest hire for the Tar Heels. Uh, he had a role, I think, in a maybe one or two other recruitments. Was it Diego Pounds? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Diego Pounds. What's so that? He's, had, he's had a role in a couple of recruitments, mm-hmm. and he has a reputation as a good recruiter. He just obviously hasn't had a chance to really flex those muscles here at UNC. Yeah, so the main thing is, is that he had to get creative with um, with Nesbitt and that's and really it was probably the one thing that really kind of held North Carolina back was that Nesbitt had made a bunch of visits to Chapel Hill, but he had never met John Lilly because Lilly was hired. I think it, w- it was either during that um, February dead period or right before. Uh, and then we come out of the dead period and um, you know, I think we had a week and then everything was shut down because of COVID. Yeah. So, um, so John Lilly has never actually met uh, Bryce and Esbitt in person, but uh, he was able to establish a relationship yeah. with him uh, very quickly. Um, you know, Nesbitt uh, mentioned just, you know, just only, only a few weeks had passed and he had a really strong bond with him, which I think speaks volumes about just the type of recruiter Lilly is. And I think the thing with Lilly is that he is able to, He's just one of those guys, just a nice guy to talk to. I think we all have a friend or two who you, you can sit down and, you know, have some hot chocolate and kind of just sit down and, and share stories about the old times. And, and that's Lil, that's who Lily is, a very honest guy. Uh, he tells you how it is. Even if it's bad, he'll, t- he'll tell you. He'll be up front with you. That was, I think, really key with the tight end situation because he said, look, I'm not going to try to sugarcoat the way North Carolina has used his tight ends recently because – you know, that's just lying. And I think a lot of other recruiters would have tried to spin it a certain way. Yeah. And, um, but Lily didn't. And I think that was, that was really key. And, and look, I think they try to get Garrett Walsh in the ball. I mean, he has two touchdowns on the year. Uh, he has a handful of catches. He's, he's not, he's obviously not the first target, but I mean, he's out there and, and you know, it's not like he's every time he's blocking, but they do use a tight end. Um, certainly in a lot of their, their power run um, offense. Um, great. All right. Bryson Nesbitt, newest commit for UNC quickly here, Don, are, are, is there anybody else to commit before the uh, mid December signing period? They have 18 commitments right now. Yeah. So I, I don't, as it stands today, I don't think so. Okay. You know, we're dealing with recruiting where you kind of have to expect the unexpected. So, you know, some four-star guy at wherever uh, emerges um, because of, some sort of coaching change next week. You know, there's always that possibility, but from what I've been being told by all my sources, they've moved on to the 22 class. And that's, that's the focus right now, especially now that Nesbitt is in the boat. Yeah. God, I think I'd still think UNC needs to start upping their offensive line recruiting. 
Well, the problem with the offensive line this year, next year is, is you're not, they're not graduating anyone. Cut so the fat. cut the fat. Well, that's, that's more of a discussion between you and Greg, as far as the team beat is concerned. I just yeah. watch the games as a fan. I mean, if these guys aren't, if they're third string and they're not competing for starting jobs, get them out of here. Let's get some freaking studs in that can at least in a year or two, you know, add some depth and, and be guys. I mean, I don't know. I just think, I always think UNC in the last couple of years and maybe back into the Fedora era, they haven't just had like a freaking stud, you know, four or five star offensive lineman. And that's what you need to take the next step. You saw how exposed they got in the Notre Dame game. Mm-hmm. I know you did. All right, Don, let's get in the top five. First, we had a, uh, we had a man cave visit over the break. We did. Two weekends we did. ago, I believe. Um, it was a UNC bye week. Yeah, we had a man cave. Any comments, concerns? Uh, it, last minute. So we kind of scrambled to figure out the food situation. Um, and Tommy came over, you came over. I, you know, you guys left after the, uh, the 12 o'clock games ended around three thirty, four 4 o'clock or whatever it may be. So we didn't get the full day, which I think is key because I think the man cave has great stamina, you know, <laughs> and, and you, when you come to it, you got to match it. But I think now, you know, you guys are both, um, Man cave warriors, and uh, you can put you that sit on up your there mantle. and watch football from twelve to eight or twelve to twelve. I mean, I go to the bathroom, but besides yeah, but you that, go 12, you go twelve to twelve. <laughs> so I go twelve to. I definitely try to get all my stuff done before twelve, and then it's it depends on what what's going on. I mean, I might go to bed and watch the the rest. I don't I don't stay up there to twelve. I might go to bed and watch the rest of the games or. You know, yeah. we have we have guests over or whatever, uh, you know, we'll go downstairs because the one thing that I love about the, the, the schedule is that a lot of ga- there's a lot of games at 12. There's a lot of games at three at three thirty, although it kind of tampers down a little bit. But once you start to get to seven and eight and all that, you have less games. So you it's, it's OK just to have one TV. Yeah. And usually you have that premiere game at eight. Yeah. And then if that one for some reason is not good, then you're stuck with like pac 12 games. And you're like, I don't know, I, I never have much interest in those honestly man i'm I'm be honest with you right now man to man Uh oh i'm not as interested in college football this year as i usually am so i i I think i I think it's a COVID thing i think it's a fact that so many games are canceled i don't know i can relate to that and it's not college football i still love college football i'm really into it i i've had a hard problem with the nfl i watched a lot of games this past sunday but some of the sundays i'm just kind of like eh. for the only hard problem you've had I guess hard problem. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I got you um, on that one. Good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, so that's yeah. I, I you know, and I'm usually be, I, I didn't do fantasy football this year. Yeah, that's I normally huge. do. That's huge. Um, so so yeah. Yeah, I would say yeah. I'm just not. I, I'm in the big NFL games, but even NFL, I'm a little. I don't know. After I had a pretty shitty fantasy year. Uh, all, all considering so i've kind of fallen off on that too man i mean it's like ah, i'm a sports guy but i'm like well maybe i should watch this instead all right let's get in our top five i have to get go to a mac press conference and a bunch of other stuff regarding that so let's wrap up this podcast that was weird a weird saliva issue just then um top five animals wow how exciting is that i have i'm i have three lists i have four listed right now Mm-mm-mm-mm. um it wasn't as easy, but yeah, I mean, there's, it almost was like you had to go a certain direction. Yeah. And if you go that direction, you can't go. Cause there were some, like, at first I started a list that had like, um, Liger and Gremlin. And Come like, on. I, so I, I trashed that. Yeah. I mean, these have to be real animals. Okay. Well, I think we had some if people. Someone e- emails me and says that Liger's real animal. I'm going to be. Hit. We, we have, we, we have, can I, let me read the first one then. Okay, let's get into it, guys. We're going to read right, a bunch so of these, then we'll give our top five, and we'll get out of here. Yeah, so uh, Ryan from Chapel Hill went the direction Ross doesn't like. Number five, Liger. It's pretty much my favorite, favorite animal, bred for its skills and magic. Number four, Tasmanian Devil. Taz was my favorite Looney Tune. That's a real animal, though. Yeah, yeah, okay. but I mean, the Taz did not look like a real Tasmanian Devil, but okay. I digress. Uh, number three, dogs, no explanation needed. Number two, hyena. They, they seem like they're enjoying life. I respect that. And number one, honey badger. He doesn't give a my spirit animal. He doesn't give a bleep. Okay. 
All right. All right. Good list there. Good list there. All right. I'm going to go Noah from Korea. Top five non-fictional animals. All right. He has my all-time favorite listed. So I'm going to, I mean, this is my all-time favorite, but he has a list. I'm going to go from five to one. Humpback whale. Epic annual migrations. For example, the pack that goes between Brazil and Madagascar every year. Talk about parental commitment or at least a strong desire to breed. John. All right, four golden. That, eagle. It doesn't Ross have a strong desire to breed? I mean, don't we all? All right, four golden eagle. Seeing them fly over the Himalayas is a down is downright majestic, beautiful creatures. No, you're showing your privilege when you said you've seen them fly over the Himalayas. All right, three m- mantis shrimp. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I think Manti, so. Mantis shrimp. Granted, I would never not know what this is without this cartoon. He has a car- cartoon linked. All right, two river otters. They're just cute and pre- playful, and always look like they're having the time. That's a of their good lives. one because because they if, Dude, if you've gone to that's the zoo my number recently. one. That's my number one. Okay, okay, yeah, you're on top of it. Yeah, and number one. So all right, river otters. They're cute. They're having the time of their lives. They just seem like they're having a lot of fun. And number one, big cats. Not really, really a fan of the house variety, but snow leopards, black panthers, puma, they're all awesome, strong, fast, lethal. I wish he had given us one there with uh, big cats, but he gave us some examples there. Yeah, no, okay. get on it. All right, Dale, who always produces. Um, <laughs> he, uh, number five. He, he, has a, he has a strong desire to breed, I guess, right? Dale, we got that. We had, Dale, next time you send your submission, let us know if you have a strong desire to breed. <laughs> all right, number five. Great white shark, the king of the ocean. Number four, orca whale, highly intelligent animals. Number three, spider monkey, because of chip. I'm going at you like a spider monkey. Number two, tiger, majestic animal who doesn't love Tigger and Tony the tiger. Good point. Number one, dog, man's best friend. I have three golden retrievers. Jeez, three dogs. You don't have a dog, do you, Don? No, just uh, just cats. What? Uh, you don't have any animals there, do you? No, the only animal has I have in my cats, heart. And my daughter has a hamster and fish. Nice. Beta fish. And they <laughs> do fight each other, I learned. Yeah. Is your is your uh spirit animal the beta fish? Sure. <laughs> Go ahead. I'll show you my spirit animal soon. <laughs> what? Um a little side note here. During the man tower, I learned all about Don's love story with his oh, wife. Oh God. We won't yeah, get into it. He had my wife come my well, my wife came up and she was great. She gave us food and all that. And Ross just grilled her with questions and she just ate it up. So she grabbed the seat and just sat down and, and answered away. But we won't yeah. go into our actual answers. Tommy was there too, kind of egging her on as well. Mm. Um I will say this. The great thing about Katie, your wife, is that she loves roasting you as much as I do. <laughs> of course. She loves making fun of you. <laughs> of course. Of course. Okay. We move on. Patrick from Scottsville, Virginia. Five. Rhino. Powerful, yet agile. And have you ever heard of the noises baby rhinos make? It will melt your heart. Four. Peregrine falcon. They can dive at over 200 miles per hour. That alone merits top five status. I will say those birds of prey are pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, I might have to include one of those in mine. Three, Snow Leopard, the master of disguise and attack. And two, the Kuoka. <laughs> have you heard of that before? No. I haven't either. I'm Googling it right now. Kuoka, Q-U-O-K-K-A. It looks like a type of rodent. Okay. Um, I'm going to Google it also. Wallaby. So it's a type of wallaby, short-tailed scrub wallaby. It's about the size of a domestic cat. So kind of a, a large. Okay. He does look really happy. Yeah. It's a marsupial. Um, he looks. He really looks like he's smiling. Yeah, that's a good this is photo. awesome. Maybe we'll make that the cover photo um, of this podcast. Okay, and that was number two, Quoka. If you're having ever having a bad day, look up a picture of a smiling Quoka. I challenge you not to be happy. And one dogs, a dog, man's best friend. I will say dog is a lazy answer for this. No I, offense to. I Patrick, agree, and some people Patrick did it, Cordell. and I. Yeah, no, I agree. But um, all right, you go on yours. You want me to go to mine? You go yours. Okay. So, as always, I try to clear my answers with Katie, and she did not approve because she says I'm immature. So, I think I need to give that disclaimer while I'm giving you my top five animals because I guess some immaturity played a role. So, number five, 
dung beetle. <laughs> okay. How great has your, is your life if all you do is go around and play with elephant poo? <laughs> okay. Okay? Okay. Number four. God, people are going to really change their opinion of me off of this list. <laughs> Number four, sloth. Yeah, sloth coming. Although sloth, I mean, sloth is, yeah, I mean, they don't do anything, which is pretty cool. And they poop once. And I think it's like a third of their body weight. Poop once, once a week. Once a week. Okay. They come, they sit up in the tree and they come down once a week and it takes them a, like, I think it takes them like an entire day or something crazy like that. And they poop and they go back up to the tree. How often do you poop a day? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not answering this question. And um, number How many times three, a week? How many times a week do you poop? I will say I, I poop three times before noon most days. Most days. That's crazy. So here's, oh, look my, at this. Number, here's my number three. Did you text this your is, wife to say bring the cat? No, it, my daughter, who she probably won't come because she's on in pajamas still because we have hope school. But this is Loki. <laughs> I, I have two cats. They're both um, ginger. Gingers, um, Loki and Hermes, and uh, Loki's the the mean one. Uh, Hermes is a nice one, but he's shy. There's free kind of creeping in a little bit. Make sure to go to YouTube and check out um, the the video of this podcast to see Don's cat. Go ahead. Yes, yes. So, so Loki has actually been to jail. Did I tell you about this? I had to hold back on a joke there. All right, go ahead. Woo! Do you want to know about Loki yeah, going to jail quickly? So while I was while I was out of town the one time we had a uh, a kid sleep over my son's friend sleep over and Loki attacked him and apparently we were like two weeks behind on his rabies shots <laughs> so because of that um, he had to go sit in jail for for like a a week because I think there's a quarantine period An actual or jail or like a veterinary place. Well, I mean, I didn't take him to like Wake County Penitentiary. I just, <laughs> it was just a vet, but we have jail pictures. Um, so behind anyway. bars, behind bars. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they, they took a picture of him, I guess, to make sure, but it's kind of sad. They don't let the, the cats out or anything, but whatever. Anyway, yeah. number two for me, penguin, which is a, my wife always says is our kind of, uh, spirit are our couple spirit animals because uh Jeez. penguins i think are one of the one of the only other species that actually has a mate and they actually give gifts to each other i didn't know this until i met my wife but i do think that's kind of cool and number one monkeys monkey and and really what solidified well i was going i was leading monkeys number one all along but i was watching naked and afraid last night Jeez. and there was a howler, howler monkey that was um that was, uh, I guess, above these two people. They made their little hut or whatever and kept on peeing on them every single night. <laughs> now, how badass is that? Not only that, but Wait, you have They're peeing on another family? They, they were, well, you have the two people from Naked and Afraid. And they make, their, oh, okay. yeah, sorry, they make sorry. their little, like, whatever, hut sort of thing. And for a couple of nights, the, the monkey would go up above and just pee on them purposely. Yeah. You ever done um, that to anybody? Ah. Uh, uh, not yeah, from a tree. Hear, I didn't want to hear this. All right. Not from not from a tree. But then also, they do other things. They throw they throw poo. Um, there's other things that I I've been advised not to talk about on here that okay. monkeys do. So All right, what's here's yours? My, here's my top five. All right, I'm gonna go number five dolphin. Okay. I'm a huge marine animal guy, marine mammal guy. Whales, dolphins, seals. I love watching the seals uh, when you're on the West Coast. I think dolphins are sweet when you see them in the ocean. Um, so a good dolphin one. But really, that, that kind of covers any – I was a big whale guy growing up. My, my, my mom got me all these whales to play with in the tub. So I grew up playing with whales and dolphins. Do you still tub. do that? Yeah. <laughs> um, I do not – I don't have a tub in my house. Fun you fact. do not. You have a stand-up shower and that's it? I have a stand-up marble shower. I don't even know if it's a marble tile shower. Yeah. I think there's a tub in the other bathroom, but I don't ever go in there. Okay. All right. Number four, bald eagle. This covers all your birds of prey. Majestic. I mean, how rare is it to see an eagle uh, when they go down and get a fish out of the water? I mean, owls too. Owls are pretty sweet. Just how they attack rodents. I mean, any type of um, uh, bird of prey with the talons and how they soar, I think are super cool. Uh, and super rare to see whenever I see a hawk in a tree, which is, is not that rare. I always like to take a picture of it. I'm actually a huge animal guy, wild animal guy, 
not a big domestic animal guy. All right, okay. three fox. Foxes are awesome. If you've ever seen one in the wild, they're they're actually probably smaller than you would think. Mm-hmm. Uh, super mischievous, big bushy tail. Uh, you know, they're going to like a uh, chicken coop and steal eggs and eat chickens. Um, you know, kind of scavengers in that aspect. Uh, they'll eat a lot of different things, but, but I think fox foxes are really cool to see in the wild. Um, you know what's crazy? There's no uh, teams with the fox mascot. I'm sure there's one somewhere, but yeah, I mean, I I have a big like problem with some of mascots. There, so many bears, so many bears, Vikings, eagles, bears. Yeah, eagles, it's like we're Panthers. just so unoriginal when it comes to naming our teams. It's pathetic. You know, there's not Grimsley Whirlies. You're right because there. I don't think there is any other Whirlies anywhere else. Exactly. <laughs> Tar Heels. Tar Heels pretty original too. Yeah. Yeah. And then Kaiser Tigers. What about Wolfpack? There's a lot of Wolfpack. Okay. It's not not a huge amount, but you got. I mean, that's a whole other college. I mean, Nevada Wolfpack. Okay, and number two, frog. Love okay. frogs. Web feet, green, <laughs> tons of different kinds of frogs too. You got the tree frogs down in different jungles. Um, you have uh, the ones bullfrogs, ones that are more prone to be seen in the water, ones that are more seen out of the water. Really green ones. Tons of different kinds of frogs. Uh, big frog guy. Okay, and last one is the otter. Love otters, river or uh, or sea. Very uh, fun, playful, cute. Uh, I like how they can both swim and walk, and, and obviously exist on land as well. They get the little um, shells and crabs and oysters and eat them on their chest, the furry little chests. I know you're into that. Um, so yeah, a lot of otters. Uh, that's my, by far my favorite animal. Has been for they're a long so time. they're so playful, which is a huge plus. Yeah, they're like a Have huge. You, attract- are you- are you familiar with sugar gliders? Mm, is that a, a little rodent? They, yeah, too? they have like they have yeah. like a bunch of different names. My wife has wanted to get one, but they're like these little things, yeah, and like yeah, yeah. people put them in their pockets and stuff. Cool. Yeah, love otters. All right, guys, we have to get out of here. I gotta go uh, talk to Mac Brown. We appreciate you listening, Don. Anything else in, in closing? No, just. Uh... Like I said before, the next time we, we talk will probably be the week of um, signing day, which should be interesting. Two weeks from now, yeah, we'll do a big signing day. Uh, yeah, it will, it will be signing day if we do Wednesday, right? Yeah, so we're probably going to have to talk about some sort of an arrangement. Yeah, we'll thing. probably try to record maybe after that, um, Wednesday night or, or Thursday. All right, guys, we appreciate you listening. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe. And make sure to check out Johnny T-Shirt and JohnnyT-Shirt.com. That's it for us. I love you, Don. You too, Ross. (laughs) Right back at you.